Our gospel lesson comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. Jesus had been out calling disciples. He had already had some success. He had already called Andrew and his brother Peter, who was called Simon, and uh, Philip. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The other morning, I came to the church. Pat says, well, the, the temperature in the sanctuary continues to get lower. It's at 63, and I don't know what to do about it. And so I came in, I looked at the thermometer, thermostat, and uh, sure enough, it said on 70 degrees. And, and I pumped it up a little bit more, and I said, well, let's just see if that helps. And we waited a couple hours, and it just got colder in here. And so we, I just had her call Enderly. He came out and checked out the system. And I, normally what happens is there's something simple. Like, well, if you did everything, but you didn't push that button twice. You know. But in this case, uh, there really was something wrong. We had let the batteries in the thermostat run down, and it uh, somehow damaged a thingamajigger. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that was the official thing that he said, a thingamajigger. Fortunately for us, it was not an extensive thingamajigger, which was all I really cared about. And he fixed it, and then it worked fine. It worked fine. So then the next morning, I wake up and, at the parsonage, and uh, the, the, the furnace there is not working. It's 58 degrees, which that's not too bad. I can take 58 degrees for a while. Uh, but then I started to turn on some uh, light switches and realized that about 80% of my power was not functioning. And when I say 80%, there were a few lights that did turn on, but only faintly which was kind of odd, since there was no dimmer switches on those. And so I came over to the church, and, uh, and then Pat said that about the same amount of lights worked here. And so we called the, the power company, and apparently there was some type of a transformer issue out on the pole outside of the church. And uh, once that was fixed, uh, most of the lights, or we had electricity, but somehow it, it burned out about almost all the light bulbs in the church. Not, not these, fortunately. We're talking the cheap ones. The cheap ones, fortunately. Um, but after, but this was like one day, then this one was the next day, and you know what? After a few bad things happened, you know what? Sometimes takes sometimes we start to expect negative things to happen. Sort of like, you know, that car that we've all had, and every day is an adventure. I wonder what's going to go wrong with this car today. But that can happen. And I think in our scripture, when we look at Nathaniel, and we listen to that comment of, can anything good come out of Nazareth? 
I think he's just had some bad experiences like that. And that's why we hear a comment like that come out of Nathaniel. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You see, Jesus has been on a roll. He went out to get some disciples and he finds Andrew. And then Andrew takes him to his brother Simon Peter. And they just drop what they're doing and they follow him. That's great. So then he comes across Philip and he says, hey, follow me. And Philip does. So then Philip is excited. You know, when you're really, you're really geared up for something. And in all of his enthusiasm, he goes to his buddy Nathaniel and says, hey, we have found the one. The one that the Old Testament prophets prophesied about. We have found him in Nazareth. And as excited as Philip was, his response was, can anything good come out of Nazareth? It's like, thanks, buddy. Thanks a lot. But if you look at the scripture, he's not phased by the skepticism. He's not phased by the doubts. The truth is, Jesus was just lucky that these other disciples, we don't hear about it, they may have had their doubts too. But it's normal to be skeptical. It's normal to have doubts. And that's exactly what Nathaniel was. He was normal. But this was, in our scripture, the first time that we see some resistance to the call to follow Jesus. But fortunately, Nathaniel does accept that invitation from his buddy Philip. Probably because they were friends and he knew that he would never hear the end of it if he didn't just go anyway. So he shows up and Jesus surprises him. He surprises him. He says, hey, here's an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And apparently that must have been a good thing. That must have been a really good thing to say because Nathaniel is surprised and he's like, well, when did you get to know me? He's like, well, I saw you before Philip even approached you under the fig tree. Somehow this came across as like a supernatural event and Nathaniel's impressed. And all the skepticism and all the doubt just seems to disperse and an amazing thing happened. That was a moment for those two guys. For Jesus and Nathaniel, they have a moment. And it turns out that Nathaniel believes in Jesus. He becomes a person of faith, a follower of Jesus. They had a moment. Last fall, before I moved into the parsonage, which I moved into the parsonage in the second half of, of November, it was kind of disruptive at my house because I'm getting my house ready to sell. It was being remodeled, and so it was moving downstairs, then moving upstairs, then moving a bunch of stuff outside, and then moving it all back in. It, it, got, it got disruptive. Let's use the word disruptive at my house. And uh, I will say it, it kind of stressed my relationship with my kids. I didn't quite have as much patience as I normally am, because normally I just have an unlimited supply. <laughs> and, and to add to the matter, so, you know, my daughter, Kendra, is in sixth grade, and my son, Wesley, is uh, 17 years old, a junior in high school. And, and I know it's hard to believe, but kids that age, they have their own issues that sometimes aren't even related to me. Sometimes they work hard to make sure <laughs> that I don't know about them. But let's just say that the things got pretty stressful and difficult between us for a while. And there were mornings that I just sat down with coffee and I just said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Thank you for all this character that I'm building through parenting. Maybe I didn't phrase it exactly like that. But there were times that I just didn't know what to do. This parenting thing, you know, I don't know. It was, it was, it was not easy. And I, 
I knew it wasn't easy for them. But then we moved into the parsonage, and there were two good things that happened. First off, I had no idea how much difference a $10 Yahtzee game could make. A $10 Yahtzee game and my kids are sitting around a table laughing and having a great time. And it turns out that my, my sweet little 12-year-old daughter truly loves to see her dad scratch his Yahtzee and not get his bonus on top. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second thing was I bought this little old thing called a ping pong table. And it's amazing at how much fun we have with a ping pong table in that big open basement. Now, it took us forever to get every single screw into that thing. I didn't realize that it didn't just put itself together. But that was part of the fun, I guess. But those kids love to play ping pong, and, and I get to play that with them. They play ping pong with each other, and they play ping pong with their friends. And it's amazing. And these two things have changed the whole way that it is. Apparently, when you're having fun and you're rolling on the floor laughing at your bed, <laughs> it makes a big difference. What it doesn't do is it doesn't mean that you don't have problems. It doesn't mean that those things that were bothering you before stop being there. It just means when you're having fun and you're laughing, it just means that the heaviness of those troubles just don't seem to wear, weigh you down the way they did before. They don't seem as severe as they did before. When you're laughing, when you're having fun, and when you're nurturing that relationship with people that love you and want you to enjoy life. That was a great lesson for me. But I believe, I believe that the same thing happened to Nathaniel on that day. There was no Yahtzee. There was no ping pong table. But I guarantee that Nathaniel came to Jesus with problems in his life. He came to him with skepticism and negativity. He was no naive person. He knew what life could really be like and how difficult it could be. But there was something about Jesus, something about him that surprised Nathaniel, and that was that Jesus opened his heart up to Nathaniel. He opened his heart up to him and made room for him, someone he just met. And they had a moment. And in that moment, Nathaniel realized that Jesus loved him. And it wasn't just any old kind of love. It's the kind of love that makes us whole. It's the kind of love that makes us look at the problems that we have in our lives and say, well, they're probably still going to be there in the morning. But you know what? With the love of Christ washing over us, with the grace of God filling our lives, those problems and those hurts and those pains, just don't seem the same. The other thing that stands out to me about this scripture was at the end of, their, of this scripture, at the end where Nathaniel believes in Jesus, becomes a person of faith, Jesus says, you know what? This isn't the end. This is the beginning of great things that are going to happen. And part of me is like, how's he going to respond to this? Is Nathaniel going to be the guy that's like, well, all right, Jesus, sure. He could have been. He could have been skeptical. But Jesus said, great things are going to happen. The heavens are going to open up and people are going to believe in me. And Nathaniel believed 
Jesus. And I think that's an important thing for us to take note of. Because sometimes God does make it known that good things are going to happen. And in this church, since I've been here for over three years, we've been praying and we've been working diligently for God to do something great here. And in 2015, I believe that God is in the process of answering our prayers. All those meetings that we've been to, all those prayers that we have put up, I believe that God has made it known that God wants to do something special with this church, through this church, and with the people of this church in 2015. We pray, oh God, God help us to reach more people. Help us to be good stewards with money. Help us to grow the ministries of St. Paul Church. And because of the prayers, because of what God moving in the people of this church, we said, you know what? We're not reaching as many people as maybe we could if we had a second service that was different. And so the church had the courage to say, well, let's start an 1130 service in the fellowship hall. Let's build it around a band. And you know what the Lord did? The Lord pretty much gift wrapped five musicians for this band, including three really gifted teenagers and two veteran musicians and said, there you go. And I'm going to tell you what, bands for churches don't just grow on trees. <laughs> that doesn't just happen without an act of God. So I'm excited. I'm excited because I believe that God is saying that God wants to do something special with this church. The second thing is, is we always said, Lord, fill, fill this church. Fill this church, God. And God said, God sent us the Rosie Posey Child Development Center in Whitney Wagner, who's going to put a preschool in here and at, at, at its best, she wants to, to serve 104 children, which means that St. Paul United Church of Christ will be one of the most draw, uh, one of the places, physical environments in town, one of the most uh, in-demand places that people will entrust the care of their treasures, their children to. Not to us personally, but to Whitney and the Child Development Center, the preschool. And so we will be a place that people will know about. We will see people. We can greet them. And hopefully we will bless them as they come and as they are here. And certainly it, it does help. The monies that come from that will help to grow and develop and further the ministries of this church as well. And that's a big deal. So we pray God act and move and do something and I think just those two things alone, God has made it clear that God's in the process of doing something special here. Now, we can always be skeptical. We can always say, can that ever happen? Will that ever work in Keokuk? That might work somewhere else, but it won't work here. Or maybe, maybe, we could take a cue from Nathaniel and realize that Jesus is at work in our lives. Jesus is at work in our church and that he is prepared to do amazing things in 2015. And it's okay to be a little bit skeptical, but we can't stay there. We got to jump in. We got to get involved. I implore you Pray. Pray for the new service. Pray for the preschool. Pray for St. Paul Church. Invite people. I encourage you to open up your scriptures and take a look. And, and I can't even emphasize enough how important it is to come to church. Come to worship if you're in town. If you're healthy, make an effort because God
God is doing something special. So God is preparing to do great things. I think that's clear. But I have more good news. But based on what happened with Nathaniel, when Jesus says good things are going to happen, it's actually okay to believe it. Amen.